that's really an interesting segue into AI and machine learning. And I mean, this is a really big topic um, in general. It doesn't just apply to bringing in data. Um, it applies to a lot of different aspects of the, your marketplace. But uh, one aspect that is really powerful is what I'm going to refer to instead of artificial intelligence, it's augmentation intelligence. And that's really what a lot of, you know, artificial intelligence and deep learning allows us to do is it allows us to augment um, what people are doing within your marketplace. And that's really how you want to think about artificial intelligence from a practical business perspective, at least in the short term, is it's going to allow you to augment things. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, take relatively menial tasks that require some level of sophisticated consistent um, context uh, data, and it can be extreme data, like millions of records of data, and make a correlation and be able to call out variances from that and even correct variances. So an example would be like Ron and the example you shared, tens of thousands of records that someone's trying to import. Um, the artificial intelligence looks at that data as it's coming in and goes ahead and you know puts a model in place that says, hey, it's a 74% likelihood that this piece of data doesn't meet our standards. It's a 97% confidence rate that this piece of data does not meet our standards. Um, okay, this piece of data does meet our standards. This one does, this one does, this one does. Oh, here's another one that's bad. And it can sort of do that menial work um, as we're running an integration. And one of the big questions that I would say, you know, makes sense to ask about your software vendor for your marketplace is, are they thinking about these kind of things? Are they putting these kind of uh, pieces in place to help you to be competitive? I think you would probably agree with this, Ron. Somebody is going to do it. Is it going to might be Might as you? well be us. Yeah, <laughs> might as well be us. It, is it going to be your platform or is it going to be your competitor's? And someone is absolutely going to take advantage of this opportunity to augment and provide extreme value. Now, like I said, there's a lot more that we can do with AI and machine learning. And I'm curious if you want to sort of open this up and talk about some of those areas, Ron. Um, and maybe I can dive into some of the details of how they work. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds great. So you think about this, it's, it's kind of like, it's much more intelligent than this, but the easy way to think about this is, you know, I think everybody's got an email box, right? And we can go into that email box and I can go in and put, um, you know, uh, an email that says, hey, if anybody C-level or above emails me, I'm going to move that over to an executive folder. Uh, if anybody from Clarity emails me, I'm going to take that and move it over to my uh, employee folder. Stuff like that, right? You're setting up these rules that tells the platform how to behave when certain things happen, right? I mean, that's really what we're talking about. And that's how machine learning and this augmentation or artificial intelligence should work on your marketplace. So let's put that into ap applicable application. Let's say I go to a new marketplace and it's like a Home Depot, right? I go to a, uh, you know, like a Harbor Tools, Home Depot, Lowe's type of website where they sell a lot of tools. I've never logged in. I've never bought anything. It's my first time visiting. But the platform on the back end has a machine learning module, very similar to the one on our platform, that's literally tracking my every move. It's looking at all the products I'm looking at, and it's recording it to the session cookie because it doesn't have a user to associate that activity with yet, right? So it's really just the person's session. So Ron goes in there, and I'm looking at all these really cool hand tools because I'm old school. And then the very last thing I do is I check out a power drill, and I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then I leave the website. And I don't go back for a couple of weeks. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh man, I forgot about that marketplace. I'm going to go check it out. So I hit the marketplace. And the first thing that pops up when I hit the marketplace is a 10% coupon off hand tools. Holy cow. How did they know that I like hand tools? I have never even logged into this site. How would they know that? How did that personalized experience to try to get me off my butt and stop just looking at hand tools but to actually potentially convert and buy one, how did they know? All right, well, that's machine learning. So that is a real world example that is real. I mean, we can do that today, right? 
And so, Chris, I want you to use, and we'll, we'll do a couple of those type live examples, right? That's one of them. Um, any other live example could be, and we've seen this quite often, most of the time it's relatively static. For example, if I go look at a laptop, um, you know, like everybody knows Amazon, everybody buys on Amazon. But if I go to Amazon right now and I try to buy a laptop down below, it's going to be a laptop plus a case plus this is this much money, right? Or similar or related items. Um, most of those lists are either static uh, or they will just show a rotating carousel at the bottom of the page of all the other laptops in the laptop category. If I went to laptops and then went to gaming, and I'm looking at like the alien laptops and the high-end laptops, right? Then at the bottom, it might have similar products and it might be all the rest of the gaming laptops within the gaming category, right? However, that may or may not be helpful, but what if I really want that laptop and I'm looking at that laptop and I keep coming back and looking at that laptop, trying to sell me a different laptop or showing me seven other laptops doesn't help me at all. However, showing me all the accessories that I can get with this laptop, like a VR headset, um, an additional RAM upgrade, an external hard drive, a custom case, a, a cooling tower, um, the extended block for having multiple 4K monitors, those kinds of things, probably cooler. Or if I'm in the gaming laptop category, maybe I want to see on the side there, hey, by the way, since you're in gaming laptops, these are the top three selling gaming laptops over the last 60 days. Or these are the top selling accessories of people who bought this exact laptop. Okay, now that's much more dynamic. That's much more applicable to my exact experience with what I'm doing right now and has a much higher likelihood of improving what I buy and potentially increasing your revenue as the marketplace owner right? Because now you're dynamically enhancing and helping my purchasing experience, not just confusing me by throwing me a list of the other 275 laptops in the gaming category, which most marketplaces do, right? I mean, how many times have you gone to Amazon, scrolled down, and there's 75 carousels with 100 products each, and you're just like, way too much stuff to look at. It's not that helpful, right? And half of the time when I go to buy something and I scroll down to see what it's also bought with, it's bought with a similar item that doesn't help. It's not intelligent. It doesn't help me. It's just a static list of, hey, here's a bunch of other stuff you might look at, right? So really the purpose, in my opinion, for the AI and machine learning is to take related products or recently viewed products, which are non-intelligent, static lists of information and make it intelligent. How do we make it intelligent? By making it applicable to what I'm doing in my shopping experience. And that's where I think AI and machine learning really plugs in. So Chris, if you agree with that, go ahead and expound on that if you want, or go ahead and dive in and talk about how we now implement that. How does it actually work? Yeah, it's... Man, I mean, it's such an exciting burgeoning field. There are a lot of different aspects here. And I want to expand on some of the other opportunities as we keep digging into this topic. So we'll get to those here in just a minute. Um, but to our, sort of to your question, how do we implement that? Uh, that's a really important question to answer. Um, and this is sort of a dynamic aspect of e-commerce with AI because Foundationally, some of the e-commerce uh, systems that are out there, uh, they leverage AI, but there are copyright and licensing and, and pricing aspects that make it untenable long term. Uh, so that's something that you want to be looking at is does your marketplace, in this case, platform, respect the copyright licensing and other pricing rules that are associated with the AI uh, infrastructure that you put in place. And that, that may seem trivial, but it, it shouldn't. It's just like anything else. There are open source options. Um, the open source options for uh, AI, uh, in many cases, have been trained at the cost of millions, if not tens of millions of dollars, to train the AI on billions and billions of records of data. And so if you sort of think about it, like you're getting that for free, 
and you need to comply with the rules that are associated with how this is being licensed. Um, and the, you know, this is a big opportunity for legal uh, folks to take advantage um, and, and enforce the rules in the long term if folks don't properly adhere to the terms. Um, now, the other thing that I would say in general is uh, infrastructure wise with AI, there are several different categories. Um, I would sort of generally break it out into three categories. And this, I mean, there are subsets of this, but generally I would say there are things that are like natural language um, and being able to deal with natural language processing. Um, this tends to use what are called transformers. And I won't go into a ton of detail, but there have been some major breakthroughs. A lot of folks may have heard of GPT-3 um, and they may have actually worked with and interacted with GPT-3. But this this infrastructure of natural language processing for which there are a lot of nice open source solutions. Um, so not just, uh, you know, paid solutions, but open source as well, uh, that basically can handle chatbots, reviews, product descriptions, um, being able to really deal with a lot of intelligent thought around search, uh, these kind of things. Uh, well, that really would be natural language processing um, in that sort of segment. Uh, then you can, within that, you can train it to cater it and customize it to a specific niche or category that you're focused on um, and actually enhance the model for your particular business and set of categories that you focus on. Uh, then you have sort of imagery. And again, I won't go into a ton of detail here, but there have been a lot of breakthroughs around diffusion. And this is a really powerful framework for doing things like identifying bad images, uh, being able to identify like category of an image and see if it's correct for a product. Um, did somebody upload a bad image um, or is it a good image? Uh, what's the tone of the image? And then of course, being able to even generate product images or category images that make sense, um, even though the seller doesn't have that. <laughs> How cool is that? Um, and so there's a lot around imagery and imaging uh, that we can do with diffusion based models. And then finally, this probably like less sexy, but really powerful uh, mo third model is based on tabular data. Um, and this is sort of like analytics of users visiting the site um, and browsing the site, um, interacting with the site, um, sales order data, order history, that kind of a thing. And so this can be very informative to sellers so that they can get data that's de-identified across the entire system, the entire marketplace, um, data as a service that's enhanced and fine-tuned so they can get really good insights on how to execute. Um, and then you also have, like you were talking about, Ron, intelligent recommendations that sort of at the limit help augment and really just reduce friction. Uh, they augment the user's experience and reduce friction. This can apply both on the um, the support side of things within the marketplace. I mean, imagine a uh, support team member has great data on somebody who's been browsing the site and they can sort of see like from the AI what's recommended to support them. Um, then you have like you were talking about intelligent recommendations that are just like mind blowing in some cases. But based on using tabular data, we can really explore the limits of the data and apply just logic and reasoning um, so that users get an incredible experience. So we'll dive into some of these next, and I'm really excited to sort of go through some examples of each of these areas uh, because each of them are unique and powerful within a marketplace e-commerce.